If I have to use one adjective for the English white, I'd say serene. That also could be interpreted as shy. I can see you. The English white, in my experience, are very laid back. Sometimes maybe this is against their own interests because although they pair bombs and they make nests and they lay eggs in those nests, I've never had a white quail when in a mixed flock that will sit and raise the chicks. They always seem to give way to the golds. I don't think it's that the whites are not capable of being mothers. I think it's just that the golds seize the opportunity and get in there first. That, however, is only in nesting. In bonding, and I've had pair bonds that have been white and gold, the white female has been dominant over the gold male. He's coming out. She was calling him then. Yeah. The English white are quite complex birds, I think, because around humans, they're quite demonstrative. It's very easy to form bonds with whites. I don't know why that is, but right from having them as chicks, I've always been able to garden with them and I've always been able to free range with them. They make great pets and great gardening companions. In fact, they do the one thing that many other birds don't do. They eat slugs. Is that a sluggy? Right, proof that quail eat slugs, you ready? Yep. Right, there's the slug, here's the quail. And no, don't bite me, look, what's that? What's that, your favorite? Double slug, double slug, you ready? Come here. The other thing about them is, it's quite rare to get a completely white quail. Normally you get what's called a panda, and that's one that has little spots of the original pharaoh wild colouring, which is also part, obviously, of the genetic mix that makes up the white. I don't see any problem with the pandas. I think they're really cute. Often I've had ones that have got heart shapes or little spots, on, often on the top of the head, sometimes on the back and the sides of the wings, but mostly on the head, I've noted. There's not much known about where they came from. We're presuming they're called English because that's where they were first created. The one version of the English that is well known about, absolutely well documented, is the one that was created by Texas A&M. I hope you've enjoyed this foray into the personality of the English white. And next time I'll be discussing the tuxedo who's very festive and ready for the party. Thanks for watching.